May we see your invitation? Art groups got left, even groups got right. Master, I hope I served you well. More not, more not. Too soon. Ask and you shall receive. What is up you guys, it's Jasper. It's been a really hot minute since I've been able to put out a video. Uh, some other stuff at the university and stuff like that has kind of been absorbing all my time. But I'm back and I'm officially here with the TBC pre-patch leveling and gearing guide for the paladins out there. Of course, this includes both the Drain Eyes and the Blood Elves, so no one is gonna be excluded in this video. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started with this video. All right, so shout outs. So the shout outs are gonna be going towards some OT, Marcel B, Dr. Diet Coke, and Josh F. If it wasn't for these four individuals, they probably wouldn't have really helped push me <laughs> to kind of get this video made and out um, in the time frame that it is. Uh, so if it wasn't for you guys, this video probably wouldn't t have taken priority over the other ones. So thank you for that. And hopefully when you do get a chance to see this, you enjoy it. Now let's get started with the leveling. So from levels one to 30, there's not much happening in terms of gear to like try to reach out and grab. Uh, whatever you can buy off the age, maybe like a really cheap BOE green or BOE blue, or just keep your eyes out while you're boosting. Um, whether it be through like the Welling Caverns or the Dead Mines or stuff like that, just keep your eye open for uh, good pickups for you that not only help your survivability, but also your efficiency as you're solo questing or solo mob grinding. All right, so from level 30 to 42, you're going to have a lot of access to some unique weapons and gear, specifically as a paladin. Um, so from level 30 to 42, it's going to be a lot of time spent in our favorite place, the Scarlet Monastery. All right, so some of the more notable loot from Scarlet Monastery that's not only good for protection, but also for retribution includes the Raging Berserker's Helm, the Scarlet Leggings, Herod's Shoulder, and of course, the Aegis of the Scarlet Commander. Of course, for anyone that is not familiar with Scarlet Monastery and how the wings work, not all four of these items are gonna be dropped by the same boss. The Raging Berserker's Helm, Scarlet Leggings, and Herod's Shoulder will be dropped by Herod. He is the final boss of Scarlet Monastery's Armory Wing, and the Aegis of the Scarlet Commander drops from, I think it's the Mograin dude. The, he's one of the two final bosses from Cathedral. So if you're going to be leveling and boosting, you're going to be spending quite a bit of time here, just because all of these wings are pretty easy to repeat and reset. So there's a pretty good chance that you'll be able to, I can't talk, but you'll be able to pick all of them up in a pretty decent amount of time. All right, so from levels 40 to 50, if you made it this far, please give yourself a pat on the back because that's a pretty big achievement to do before the pre-patch ends. Um, this might be one of the slower sections of your leveling journey, just because a lot of people will probably still be doing Maradon boost, but the amount of groups that are running it might be a little bit smaller. Um, so I would say, hopefully by this time you've collected enough gear from SM and some other stuff to kind of make yourself self-sufficient as a solo leveler. So probably from level 40 to 50, if you're not running Zulfarak, you might be just doing some questing and grinding by yourself. Um, but in the level 40 to 50 range, there are a lot of nice pieces of BOE gear that you can actually get um, that are really going to last you a very long time. The only issue with some of these pieces of gear is that they are still a bit expensive. Um, so just depending on your server situation and the economy on your server specifically, these items might be a little bit unreasonable to purchase in my opinion, but I'm going to include them just because I have used these pieces of gear on my Paladin when I was leveling um, in the first year of Classic. Uh, thankfully I was able to get a hold of them for a cheaper price, so I will stand by them that they do help and they do last you a very long time. And some of these, depending on how your gear is going to be set up or your RNG with some items, uh, some of this gear might even take you into the first couple dungeons and leveling phases of your journey in the Outlands. Alright, so the first item is a level 40 BOE World Drop. It is the Boots of Avoidance. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit harder to find, but if you do get your hands on it early, um, like when in your level 40s, this is gonna be a great like tanking set piece for you as a Paladin. Um, the dodge is nice. It doesn't really, it's not the most efficient for you as a Paladin just because you really wanna aim for like block and defense, but this is gonna be a good first piece to your set. Um, if you're not familiar with what your um, stat allocation should be or like your stat priorities should be for a protection paladin, I'll go ahead and make a list 
on the screen now for you. Um, in terms of like the top three that I would recommend trying to get uh, from this level onwards uh, for the rest of your journey, even through Outlands, is going to be Stamina, Defense, and Block. Um, just because those are going to scale the best with your kit. And then also, they're going to help you be a little bit more tanky and a little bit more survivability for you and the group. Um, and of course, in terms of like offensive stats, I would primarily just try to seek out and look for anything with spell power or spell damage on it. Um, just because all of your spells, whether it be Judgments, Avenger Shield, Consecration, uh, Shock, if you're still going to be doing like a Holy Shock and Inspect or something like that, that's also going to be scaled up from your spell power. Also Exorcism. Exorcism is also on that list as well. <laughs> The next item on this list might be a little bit controversial, but it is the Flurry Axe. So the Flurry Axe, without a doubt, is one of the better tanking weapons for a Protection Paladin, even in Classic, and even into some parts of TBC. Um, realistically, it's going to fall off pretty fast, but in terms of getting you where you need to be uh, for those like 18 or so levels until you're able to really safely get into Outlands, uh, if you don't want to go there at 58, maybe just go when you're 60. The Flurry Axe is going to last you a very long time. In addition to that, the Swing Timer is really fast, and that really scales very well with your Seal of Righteousness. Um, and it's just, overall, it's a great tanking weapon. It's great at putting out threat. It has a decent amount of DPS to it. Um, the extra swing attack and stuff like that really helps with just kind of like soloing mobs and stuff like that. You can kind of burn them down a little bit faster. But if you're looking for a decent tanking weapon that is going to last you a very long time, the Flurry Axe is going to be phenomenal for you. The other piece of gear is not available until you get to level 50, but it is the Stockade Pauldrons. These generally tend to run for about, I'd probably say about 100 or so gold nowadays. Um, and they are absolutely phenomenal for getting that uh, kind of like pre-TBC uh, kind of like defense set started. Um, this one I used for the longest amount of time, and these were some of my favorite shoulder pads that I've ever used. I absolutely love them. Uh, they bring a lot to the table. They give you a lot of stamina, a lot of armor. The spirit is meh, but honestly that plus 10 to defense is absolutely phenomenal for you, especially as you start getting into like black rock depths and stuff like that, because it's really going to help your survivability. And then the other weapon on here is going to be the Hanzo sword. All right, so this sword has been included on the list just because it is absolutely phenomenal if you're not able to afford a Flurry Axe. Um, it's got the same weapon speed on it, and also it does a decent amount of top-end damage. Um, in addition to that, there's also a chance for an extra proc just from the auto attacks, which is all you do as a Paladin, um, to wound the target for an extra 75 damage. Um, so it just it helps kind of like scale up your DPS output and stuff like that. Um, there's no like spell power on it at all, but it is a sword. So if you happen to be a human, this also works well with your sword specialization. Uh, whenever you start looking at min maxing kind of things or like going into the nitty gritty details of certain things. Um, but for leveling and stuff like that, I mean, you can probably pick this up for about 30, 40 gold and it's going to last you for a while. Um, at least until you get into the outlands and you can find a better weapon. All right. So when you get to like the level 50 to 60 range, this is where... I don't know, a lot of us probably know where the gear is going to be at. A lot of it's going to be from um, places like BRD, even some stuff in like Dire Mall East even, just because those are kind of like easier places to kind of get uh, some carries through, especially because there's probably a lot of people that'll be more than happy to carry through some stuff. Um, some of the gear uh, from BRD specifically, I'll go ahead and list out now. The two main items that I'd like to point out um, in terms of like trying to get uh, that is plate and also kind of does a little bit of everything for you is going to be the earth slag shoulders. This comes from Lord Rockor. Um, it's got a pretty decent amount of armor, strength, stam, intellect, and spell power. And the other one is the Foreman's Head Protector, which comes from Phineas Dark Vire. And that pretty much does the same thing. It's got armor, strength, intellect, stam, and some spell power on it. DM East also has quite a few items that is really going to be helpful in terms of like getting some decent amount of tanking gear um, or just some extra spell power gear before you head into the Outlands. And these items include the Energetic Rod and the Energized Chestplate. These both drop from Owls in the Wild Shaper. He's the final boss of Dire Mall East. The Energetic Rod is a little bit slower um, when looking at like the attack speed and stuff like that, but it gives you five intellect and some plus damage and healing. In addition to this, we have the Energized Chestplate, which overall is pretty nice. A uh, decent amount of armor, strength, intellect, and stam, but also it gives you 5 MP5, which is always going to be welcomed by Paladins because we seem to never have enough mana. 
All right, before I finish the video, I at least want to talk about two different shields that you can get. Uh, one is going to be in the lower level 50s. Um, this one is going to be from Shade of Veronicus. It is the last boss in the Sunken Temple. This one is going to be really good overall just because it gives you a little bit of everything that you need uh, in terms of armor, block, and it gives you like a 6 and 7 across the board. Um, and as a paladin, we can actually utilize and take advantage of all of these stats, so they benefit us in some regard. Um, once you get up to the upper level 50s though, if you're able to get into upper black rock, definitely check out the draconic deflector. Um, it's it's going to be really good in terms of armor. The stamina is kind of meh, but that plus 10 defense is really going to be phenomenal, especially when you get into the Outlands dungeons. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the gear that I would personally recommend people to try to get. Uh, some of this gear is a little bit out of reach, but some of it is also kind of like not too terribly out of reach. But I would say if you're able to get into a run, uh, where some of this is located, please, please, please try to get it because it's going to help you a lot. And there's probably like 18,000 items that I probably forgot to include. I just wanted to kind of make a list uh, that isn't too terribly large, but also not unattainable for anyone that is leveling during the pre-patch. Um, without a doubt, some of us won't be able to do this just because of time restraints, because it is going to be a little difficult to level in the pre-patch. Uh, not just for like the number of people leveling, but also just, I mean, you know, the world's starting to open back up and things are kind of changing in terms of like some people's time schedules. So let me know down in the comments what all I forgot, because you're probably already going to let me know, and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm going to be making some uh, kind of like things to know about uh, certain things in TBC regarding like tanking and what consumables look like. So that's going to be coming out within the next couple days probably. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry it took me so long to make it, but uh, yeah, I'll see you soon in the next one, all right, you guys? Peace.